My name is Denise Roussel, your guide to creating a new life, and welcome to my joy party. So, before people start coming in here, I wanted to show you my little outfit. It's a party, so I decided to dress up, and it's part of my hummingbird costume. Got sequins and feathers, and part of my fairy costume because I'm a fairy and I'm a hummingbird. And so, somebody's here. What I want you to do is when you come in, Heather, hello Heather, go ahead and feel free to be commenting, saying hi, and tell us where you're from. So this is the party. So as you come in, I want you to just go ahead and say hello, and tell us where you're from. So, this is our joy party. And I'm wondering what you guys have been doing today. Heather, would you like to tell me what you're doing? What you've been up to today? I don't know if I have it on the right view. Ah, there we go. Okay. So, anyway, uh, what I've been doing is I have been working on a, a course. There you are. I've been working on a course. You know, we're in this middle of this big shift and everything's changing. And so I'm making an automated online course. I'm so excited about it and I'm almost done. <laughs> and it's called Get Your Shift Together. <laughs> How do you like that? So, um, so much has been happening with me that I'm just kind of, hi, Patrick. I'm kind of like opening up to this joy, this ecstatic joy that we are. It's our natural state. So when fear comes in, hi, Tanya. When fear comes in, we have a tendency to get bogged down and it gets really, really heavy. And we can't really access our natural state. So the more that we get in touch with who we really are, and we get up here in these very light and airy vibrations, oh my gosh, life is a lot of fun. So I wanted to tap us in to that with, with a bunch of stuff that I have planned here. But I wanna wait a couple more minutes as people are coming in, because I started a couple of minutes early, and if anybody would like to contribute, put a comment there and say hi, and tell us where you're from, then I would love that. So once again, I want you to feel free to participate. If you have something you want to comment and add, if you have a funny something that you want to share, then please do. So, okay, like I said, this is our joy party. And one of the things that I've been able to do is experience a lot of stuff in my lifetime. That's funny. And so I want to tell you a bunch of funny stories. And so I don't know if, if, if many of you know me, but um, over there is a picture. I'm going to go get it. This is an old picture, but this is a picture of my son, Corey. And hi, Rita. And so he passed away back in 2014, and he's still here. He's my spirit God, and he's been guiding me and helping me open to this joy that we are. So he's here with us. So I thought it would be appropriate to start off with some Corey stories, because that guy was crazy. And Lordy, he was pretty extreme. And so the first Corey story is called Mouse in the House. So, for a period of time, uh, Corey lived at our house, and we had an old house. It's there in Baton Rouge. And sometimes, well, we started hearing sounds. It was coming from the attic. And it sounded like some creatures were moving furniture. <laughs> and it just went on and on and on. Well, we really kept 
kind of like, uh, oh, we won't worry about that. We won't worry about that. But then we started seeing the creatures. They were coming out here and there like, oh, well, I guess we need to do something about it. So we said, well, we really don't want to put any poison out because what if they die in the wall and then they, and then, or they go out and hi, Diane, and then they go out and then some dog cat eats them and then they get poisoned or whatever. We just thought, ah, well, you know, they stink the house up. We won't do that. Well, let's try, let's try the, the most humane way, which is the sticky traps. So we, it was, we had to go up in the attic. Of course, we, we get Corey to do all this stuff because, you know, <laughs> that's what sons are for. So we climb up there in the attic, put down some sticky traps. And I want to tell you that mice are pretty smart. But in the beginning, it worked. And so we'd hear, this is okay, get stuck on the sticky trap. And so we're like, oh, Corey, time to go up. We got one. So you just go on up the, the ladder. You have to climb up the ladder to get up there. Sure enough, there's the mouse. And so we went through all this trouble to try to keep this mouse alive. So he, he takes the mouse and he picks him up by the tail, takes him off the trap, and he's gonna bring him outside to rescue the mouse. And he's standing at the side door and then he takes the mouse and he flings it across the patio. And just as he flung it across the patio, this black cat came rushing across and ate him. <laughs> <It's amazing. laughs> so, Anyway, that's one of the Corey stories. And the next one has to do with creatures also. It's called Super Cat. Okay, so at this period of time, Corey was living at my house. And, you know, he didn't, he only, was only living there for a short period of time as an adult. And so he, he wasn't really aware of our situation. We didn't have any pets or anything like that. Well, our neighbors had a cat. Well, I didn't know the cat. Hi, Daria. Uh, it's been a long time. It's good to see you. Um, so our neighbors had this cat, and I didn't know anything about it. So, you know, I, I'm going off. I'm going to do my thing. I left. When I come home, we had this big kitchen window, the full, full wall of a window, and I noticed a piece of cardboard in one of the window panes. Mind you, this is like 80 year old glass, okay? And so I'm like, why is my window broken? Why does one of those window panes have cardboard in it? So I come home and Corey's there and my daughter Bethany's there and they're like, he's like, you're not gonna believe what happened. <laughs> okay, what? What happened? So he's like, well, there's this cat that was at the front door. And he was very friendly. I opened the door. I was petting the cat and he decided he wanted to come inside with me. Hi. Okay, it's buffering. Are you anybody else having that issue where it's buffering? Connection is buffering. Okay. All right. Let me know if it keeps going on. All right. So anyway, he's petting this cat outside, and then he has this idea, well, I'm going to go inside. Well, the cat follows him inside. And so he figures, yeah, maybe my mom, hi, Diane. Maybe my mom doesn't, she, she's friends with this cat. And so maybe... Maybe it's just used to coming in the house, which it wasn't, but he didn't know any better. So he's in the house and he's petting the cat. And you know, the cat's kind of skittish because he's in a strange house. And so the cat starts kind of running back and forth across the house. And so just then from the side door comes my daughter, Bethany and she walks in the door and you know there's Corey there's the cat all skittish and she said whose cat 
said, why is there a cat in the house? And when she walked in, it spooked the cat. And so the cat took a running from one end of the house all the way to those kitchen windows that I just told you about. I mean, shoot, like this, and went straight through the window, just like this. times. So the next few things I'm going to have to uh, read from this book, Beyond This Space, My Son Corey's Story and How He Changed My Life. So Corey was very prolific and he has a lot of cool things to say. Well, the name of this story is Jailhouse Rocks. So before I tell you the story, hi George, it's great to have you. So before I tell you the story, you need to know that Corey lived a pretty dramatic life, which include a one-year federal prison stay on a charge related to alien smuggling. And when he went to prison, um, he had decided to transmute his prison sentence into a time of personal transformation. So I mean, amazing stuff happened, and he brought me along for the ride in that transformation. So uh, he was in a very good place inside. And so that's where this story comes from. Let's see. Oh, by the way, he had a tendency to get himself into trouble, which is, this is how we live. Hello, Ramantas. And so um, he did things kind of, well, first of all, you're not supposed to give people money. And somebody needed to get a phone call, call their mom, and he gave them money. And, he also had, and that's against the rules, and he also had a little store where he would make brownies and all kind of stuff and just kind of had a little side business going. And so he got caught, and oh, another time he, uh, he stole a bag of, of laundry from the CO's office. And so it's just, just to be ornery, just to get at him. And well, that landed him in the hole, which is solitary, which is where he spent 95% of his time uh, reading and writing and meditating and having some amazing experiences. But meanwhile, this is the context of this story. And he says, anyways, all is well. Oh yeah, today the lieutenant came around looking in cells, asking inmates how they are. They constantly check to make sure we're not killing ourselves. I feel like I'm an exhibit at the zoo sometimes. Probably 20 different people come and ask, how are you doing? Sometimes five times a day. Psychologists, wardens, guards, researchers, lieutenants, food service workers. I'll be sleeping and wake up and a line of five or six officials will turn, take turns peeking into my cell to look at me and ask me if I'm okay. So today, the lieutenant a woman came by and asked, how are you? And I said, excellent. And she said, excellent? You can't be excellent. You're in jail. And he said, so are you. And she said, well, uh, uh, yeah, well, I get to go home. And he said, well, so do I. <laughs> It's all a matter of perspective, you know. We're over here and we're like, oh my gosh, this terrible things. We gotta stay in our house. We can, you know, we got this crazy virus going on. But we can look at it from a completely different perspective. Hello, Nicole. Hello, Tom. Hello, Ramantas. We can look at it from a completely different perspective and say, I get to stay home and have myself a personal retreat and I'm gonna have fun doing it. So that's what we're doing right now, having us a little personal retreat and a little joy party. So the next story is Tyrell and Paco. Who 
Okay, so my crazy man, he just did unusual things and he loved to have fun and he loved Craigslist. So one day he decided to just do a prank bogus Craigslist posting and it was very clever and this is how it goes. Howdy, my two wild hogs need rehoming immediately. Their names are Tyrell and Paco. They're large black hybrid Razorbacks, each weighing 120 pounds. They are my best friends. They are my only friends for that matter. But my wife says they have to go today. They aren't house trained. I haven't had much luck since I caught them when they were already grown. And they live on a diet of leftover steak, Frito-Lay chips of any kind, and unfortunately, trim and sheetrock. From numerous experiences, they do not get along very well with toddlers, cats, electrical outlets, or aquariums. If you think you can give my babies a good loving home, send me a picture, references, and a short essay <laughs> as to why you'd be the best possible father to my sons. My wife wants me to say she's willing to take you to eat out at Hudson's on the Bend in appreciation for you giving them a good home. I have some questions and I wanna make sure that you're not gonna make a burrito out of my boys. Have a good one. Did you like that? Wave to me if you like that. Hello, you can talk to me peeps. Hello, Sean, hello, Paul. Great to see you, you guys are amazing. So there's a couple of things that he used to just do short little posts. And hey, hey everybody! <laughs> he would do short little posts. And I like this one. It says, Corey Roussel wonders if anyone else has been so incredibly, ecstatically grateful that they are sure that they were going to explode into a cloud of jelly beans confetti and hundred dollar bills at any moment or is that just me <laughs> now that's that's cute that's joyful that's what i'm talking about ah jan great to see you great to hear you and here's another one and it says so here's my secret you know that guy you drive by on the side of the road listening to a Walkman, dancing like a madman. He's totally absorbed with the rhythm, drenched in sweat, as though his dance were a situation of life or death. That's what I'm talking about. And speaking of dance, it's time for Disarming Amazing New Candid Experiences. In other words, dance. And so wherever you are right now, here's your chance to have a little short disco break. And I brought my little disco ball. And when I press this button, I want everybody here to get up and do a little dance.
did you not dance to me? <laughs> like that. You guys are quiet. Nobody's saying anything. All right, you're welcome to participate by asking questions or commenting. And I may be able to figure out if anybody wants to add anything. Giovanna, good to see you. Oh, by the way, smiling and laughing is a sure way to raise your vibration. So that's one of the things that I've been doing is I've been watching a lot of funny movies. Thanks, Aaron. I've been, hey, Jerry. I've been watching a lot of funny movies. Hi. To keep my vibration high. I've been watching funny videos and I go around the house and I just smile. Whenever we smile, do I have an acronym for SING? Um, stay in something. Well, I have to think about it. Do you have one? Do you have an acronym for SING? Okay. While he's thinking about that, I want to move into a different category of stories. So great to see somebody happy. You, you got it. Now you can be happy too. Okay. Hey, Sherry. Okay. We're going to move on to Lost in Translation. So I have, well, my family. Hi, Tanya. My family, when the kids were younger, we had this great idea. We were living in South Texas. We're going to go to Monterey, Mexico, and we're going to take our car. We're going to drive around this big old city in Mexico, which if any of you have ever done that, um, it's not so fun because it's stressful because you don't know where you're going. This is way back before they had GPS and all that crap. And so you don't know where you're going and the signs you can't read the signs and the roads are done done different ways and we're like stand right here at the the light and the bus comes i mean like inches away and i'm going oh, 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 oh. just like wow and so we're like every time we get in the car we're like oh my gosh just kind of like hunched over and stressed out so Another thing that happens when you drive the car, hi Eric, is that there's all these people that want to come wash your windows or sell you something every time you come to a red light. Well, for the most part, we didn't really, you know, deal with that. And I speak Spanish, but uh, my husband did not. You know, he knew a few words, and that's the thing. When you know a few words, uh, well, when you know a few words, sometimes you can get into trouble. The name of this story, by the way, is Strawberries and Boobs. Okay, so we're riding along and kind of stressed out, you know, tense and everything like that. We come to the light and actually we weren't that far of going to the airport. So I don't even know why we did this, but because you're not supposed to bring fruit to the airport. But... Uh, they have some amazing strawberries in Mexico in these countries, okay? And so we get to the light, and I'm here, my husband's here, and this, the guy's right outside my window. And I roll down the window, and I saw these amazing strawberries, and I say, ¿Cuánta cuesta las fresas? How much do the strawberries cost? So fresas is strawberries. Fresas. Okay, so... I don't remember how much it was, but maybe I'm going to say 100 pesos, a uh, hundred pesos, which I'm sure it wasn't that. He said 100 pesos. And meanwhile, pesos, well, that's a money exchange, okay? So my husband's over there and he says, 100 pesos? 
Well, by the way, he was confused because he thought he said pesos, but he said pechos. Pechos means chest or breast. And the guy just looked at him like, uh, uh, cien pechos? Oh my gosh. We just bought it and we went on our way. We were rolling. All of that tension just went out of the window. We could not stop laughing. And the thing is, is he didn't even realize he was saying, asking about the strawberries costing a hundred boobs. So anyway, that's really amazing. All right. Now I have this amazing cousin named Sergio and he's from Guatemala. And this is not, uh, English is not his first language. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Tanya and Greta. And so he has a pretty thick accent. And he can, he has this also amazing uh, business in Houston. And he, he, has, he has all these contractors that he goes, these big stores that he services, has cleaning crews that goes and does this. And so he told us that one time he was having a meeting with a manager at a Home Depot there in Houston. And at the end of the meeting, um, he said, I'll keep touching you. <laughs> he didn't know no better. <laughs> and that was to keep in touch. He meant to say keep in touch. But instead, he said, I'll keep touching you. And that is one of those phrases that over the years has stuck with me. And I'll use that. It's just, just comic relief. I'll give you permission to use it too. I'll keep touching you <laughs> since we can't touch one another. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. So, so I told you he has this business. And so he... Sergio does and uh, so he had been trying he'd been playing phone tag with this lady this this uh, client and he you know he tried to call her she tried to call him blah 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 anyway so he finally got her and she was gonna say oh you know I, I was just getting ready to call you and so mind you now here's this guy calling this woman that she he does not know he calling her and he's he's a man that's got a thick Spanish accents and she said I was just, I was just gonna call you and he goes oh I beat you up <laughs> and she got really quiet I beat you up okay he was trying to say I beat you to it but I beat you, I beat you up. And that's another little phrase that is just used for comic relief sometimes is I beat you up. Okay, I'm wondering, oh, Sergio, oh my gosh, I had to sell that story. <laughs> And she said, oh, I tried, I was going to call you. And you said to her, I beat you up. <laughs> and I told him about the manager at Home Depot when you told him after the meeting, I'll keep touching you. So wave to me, Sergio. I love you so much. By the way, those stories have really sustained a lot of happiness and joy with me. And so... Thank you. All right. I would like to take a break and ask any of you, would anybody like to share something funny, something that they've been doing, something that they've enjoyed today, something that's making them happy? Or here's a big one. Remember I told you that I've been watching funny uh, stories and funny movies? Well, I would like anybody knows a funny movie to put it there in the comments for the rest of us. 
I trust the High Kyrian. It's people coming from way back in the day and family, etc. Which, speaking of which, I have um, three stories left. And no, five stories left. Well, I'm going to shift into the Benny stories. Hey, Tressa. So, Benny is my oldest grandchild, and he is amazing. And he also has, I, I could probably write a book on all of the stuff he's gone through, because he can be quite uh, precocious and just get into all kinds of fun, let me put it that way. So, I want to tell you about Benny when he was like two years old. This this little guy, and he's curious about everything. And so, there's a family wedding. Rita may have been there, so you can account to this. I wasn't there. Laurel and Hardy, okay, great. So, meanwhile, it's on this antebellum home there in, uh, in Louisiana. So, there's these beautiful grounds, and there's, uh, there's some, like, other outbuildings that they rent out for like bed and breakfast and um, big out spacious spaces where everybody's outside because it's just beautiful. So anyway, um, there's a, a golf cart there and that's what they use to do some maintenance here and there. Well, when you got a crowd with a lot of people and a very active child, sometimes it's really hard to keep your eye on that kid, because he's like, whatever, which way, but loose. And so, they turned around, and they went, where's Benny? Well, Benny got very curious. He saw that golf cart. And so, he went over there, and he's thinking in his little two-year-old mind, I wonder what it would be like to get in that golf cart to be climbing in that little golf cart. And then, he didn't realize this, he didn't know any better, but the key was in the golf cart. And so he's like, well, I've seen my parents drive, so I bet I could drive too. So he couldn't even see him, he's like this over here. And he put his foot on the accelerator and he went, kaput, he went and slammed into the buildings, the bed and breakfast buildings. Oh my gosh. And it felt, he hit his head. He kind of gave himself a shiner. The people in the, in the bed and breakfast came out and they heard it like, what in the world is going on? And meanwhile, I mean, he didn't just go like a few feet. Like he went, he went like this, uh, several feet before he got and driving this little golf cart. And even though it was all turned out okay, you know, he got a little boo-boo, but I was just wondering what was going through his mind when his, this golf cart starts driving. And I wish he would remember that when he gets older, but Lord knows if he will. But there's nothing like a little excitement for a kid to come around. And when Benny comes around, there seemed to be a lot of excitement. When he was little, he's not so much anymore. But when he was little, oh my gosh, it was something. So that was one of them. Okay, so meanwhile, you know, I told you all about Corey. And so um, pretty soon after Corey passed, it was, you know, pretty rough around the house. And, um, Landon, that's my son, whose son is Benny. Um, and the family was there and they were sleeping in the in the front bedroom and I'm in the back bedroom. And I'm not an early riser, so, you know, to some like, I don't know, it was seven, eight, seven thirty in the morning, I don't know, some early time because these kids get up at before the crack of dawn and I don't even grit up, get up before the crack of noon. But, <laughs> Anyway, so here comes Landon. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, come in. And he's all in a panic. And he's like, where's the key to the front room? I said, what key? There's no key to the front room. There happens to be 
uh, from before we lived there, it's an old house, there was a deadbolt because people, different roommates and all, they had this deadbolt, but we never had a key for it or anything. It's one of those flip things on the other side. And so he's like, Benny locked himself in the room and I'm, I've got to get in there. I've got to have the key. And he was panicked. Speaking of panic, you know, like we've had to go through. And so uh, I'm like, okay. And, you know, he kept going back and forth and he kept saying, open the door, Benny, open the door, open the door. And by the way, Benny was like, once again, like a year and a half, just tiny, tiny and, but he's smart, okay? So Landon's like, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, 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 I'm probably going to have to call the fire department. Like, what? call the fire department. <laughs> oh, okay, calm down. It's okay. He said, I'm going to have to break the window. And I'm thinking, okay, this is an educated man, but when we're panic, we're not really thinking. I'm like thinking, okay, we're going to break a window to get a child, and that's not going to be a danger, breaking a window. So anyway, the child is in a room that's got a bed and a dresser and there's nothing that's gonna hurt him. But that doesn't matter. When you're panicking, you can't think of these things. It's just like, oh my gosh. So I'm just like, oh, oh okay, uh, maybe you ought to wait on calling the fire department. And uh, I, maybe you ought to wait on breaking the window. Let's just wait and see. So finally he had enough. And he went over to the door and he was teaching them uh, the my bit, my grandson's bilingual. He was teaching him Spanish and English. And in Spanish, he told him, open the door, you're going to get punished. <laughs> all of a sudden, you hear, click. He had been standing in front of that door listening to all this drama the whole time. He knew exactly what he was doing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Kids are amazing. Hi, Kim. I hear you got some grandchildren there, too. Okay, so another story, Benny's story. Um, you know, the kid's are really smart, and he watches his dad, and he, he asks a lot of questions, and he loves all sorts of things. And so he's actually was very advanced in things that he knew and the things that he liked. So he's like four years old, and we went to their place. They have a nice pond, and we were out there just talking to him, and had, you know, they're fishing and stuff like that. Well, earlier that day, hi, Pamela, my uh, husband had been at work, and like the cleaning people came around with their feather dusters, and one of the feathers fell out of the feather duster. And so, well, Ross had the idea, well, you know, it's simple, but kids like simple things, so I'll just get him this feather. So Ross came home and he put the feather in a, you know, cute little box, a little gift box, and speaking of feathers. <laughs> anyway, so we're over there at the pond and we're talking to Benny. <laughs> and uh, Ross said, oh, um, I got you something. It's in the car. You want to go get it? And Benny said, what is it? Is it a drone? <laughs> oh my gosh! A drone is four freaking years old! I didn't even know I knew what a drone was. Well, I said, no, it's not a drone, but it's like a drone. And so I took the feather and it just kind of like let it swirl around. <laughs> oh my gosh! The kid is so crazy. Oh, we've enjoyed them so much that I've decided in my next lifetime I'm going to go straight to the grandkids. <laughs> okay, so now I have two more stories. And one of them is called Sadie's Big Adventure. Okay, so uh, other than an occasional cat, we, we have never had a dog. And... You know, kids love dogs, and of course, that was just not something that we were interested in at that time. Hi, Sonia and Paprika, and so, meanwhile, uh, let's see, Landon was probably seven, 
six or seven and Corey was two years younger. So he was four or five. Yeah. And so we lived in Victoria, Texas, and we had this house that uh, like the masters on one side and then the living room and the kitchen and dining room in the middle. And then there's three bedrooms on the other side. Well, the other side of the house, uh, there's a, like the side yard and then the fence, but it's, it's, it's part of the house that nobody goes there because there's no, there's no gate there. It's just kind of dead space and it's not very much space either. It's just kind of like, you know, just a, a little strip of land that we just never went to. So, um, this particular week, I, I was noticing some odd things. Um, I noticed that the lunch meat supply was getting low pretty quickly. Like, hmm, wow, I guess people want some lunch meat. And in fact, one time I saw Landon grab some of that lunch meat and then head out the door. What is going on? And so I was getting suspicious. So before I knew it, I said, I'm gonna go see where he went. And I went around to that side of the house. Well, there was a dog, like a yellow lab, tied up out in that space. And come to find out, they had found this dog and they put it there. They had been feeding it for a week, a solid week. And they named it, <laughs> they named her Sadie. And the dog had a freaking tag on it. Neighbor's dog that had gotten loose. And so we took a picture with it before we sent them home. They had their arms around the dog and they're waving with their dog, Sadie, which is not the dog's name. So uh, I was very gracious of those owners not to be upset with my kids for dog napping their dog. Hey, Jenny, it's good to see you. Okay, so. The last story, hey, Melanie, the last story, uh, yeah, the last story, uh, thanks, Pamela, is about my son, Landon. Now, that guy is amazing, but he's always been, my kids have been real different birds, okay? And so, for my, uh, Melanie's on there, it reminds me of Melanie's got a real go-getter sort of leadership sort of thing, well, Landon's been, you know, like this entrepreneur from the get-go. And he's very focused. So here he is like 10 years old. At 10 years old, he started his first business. And, oh, the name of this business is NPYD. And what NPYD stands for is newspapers at your door. So the idea was, is that they walk, skate, or bike ride from door to door, wherever they had clients, and they would take the paper after it was thrown, and they would bring it to the front door and prop it against the door. So that when the client opened the door, boop, it would fall in their door. And they were only charging like 50 cents a day or something like that. So it was not really that much for, like maybe $15 or it might even been less than that. I don't know. It was, it was not a lot of money, but they were ambitious and he was, and he was also kind of a leader because he talked Corey and two of the neighborhood boys, the Cornetti boys, which I wouldn't be surprised if Monica jumps on here too, but she taught, which the Cornetti boys lived around the corner and like across the street and around the corner. And so, he talked them into taking shifts, helping him. He's like 10 years old, mind you. And so the funny thing is, is do you know what time the, um, the newspapers get thrown? It's very early. It's like 5.30 in the morning. And so we're talking about they have to get up before the sun breaks. They have to get up like at 6 in the morning or sometimes earlier to do their job. Hello, Sylvia. And so... Uh, 
that was a very, that's a lot of leadership to be able to not only do it, and he did it for two years, not only to do it, but to, to get those other people to do it with him. Hey, Jess. And so here's Landon. And um, he was paranoid that he would not wake up to do his job. And mind you, this is not like, oh, I'll do this a couple of days. This is every freaking day getting up like at 5.36 in the morning to go and do his business. Oh my word. So one day um, I was sleeping and so I told you that the house in this particular house in Victoria, uh, the, the bedroom, the master bedrooms on one side of the house and then the kids bedrooms are all on the other side of the house and in the middle is the front door and the, the uh, living room and the kitchens in the back, etc. where's the back door. So I'm in my bedroom and I'm sleeping and the window is right by my head and we've got these like little mini blinds. And it was only like, I had been asleep for a while. It was like one in the morning. And all of a sudden I hear, wow. sleepwalker he's barely awake and he knocks on the door and Monica the mom she hadn't even gone to sleep yet and she's like Landon it's one in the morning they're sleeping it's not time and he argued with her yes it is <laughs> get them out of here she said no it isn't and so meanwhile when he came back home you know in Texas they had everything's Texas side then they're like this huge roach on the door and he was not about to go into there he was already upset that he woke up at one in the morning and that he messed up there and then you know the roach and then he comes to my door and scared the bejesus out of me I'm like oh my gosh these people are crazy <laughs> I don't know if any of y'all have crazy people like that so I'm gonna take a breath, take a breath. Does anybody have anything they wanna share? Because if you do, I'm gonna see if I can get you on here. Raise your hand. Okay, so some of you just started watching kind of recently and I've already been going on for like almost 50 minutes. So I want to encourage you to watch from the beginning so you can get your full dose of joy. And I want to shift right now and let everybody just take a breath and stretch. Woo, do a little bit of wiggling. Woo! And I want to talk just a little bit about the power of joy. So when we're in this uh, low vibration of fear and panic and worry, anxiety, we're just like closed down. We're in survival mode and we cannot do anything but just survive. All of our energy goes just to surviving and we can't receive. So it's really, really important that we be able to open, let go of all that fear and anxiety and begin to come up higher into vibrations, vibrations of joy. And those vibrations are very light 
and airy and all that fear, and all very hard and serious and very difficult and heavy. So one of the ways that we can get into this higher vibration is through smiling and laughing. So when you find yourself going around the house, worrying, being afraid, feeling alone, feeling sad, find a way to make yourself smile and or laugh. And then start thinking about the best possible scenario, the most joyful thing that you can think of. And just keep going there, feeling it, feeling the joy. That's where the power comes in. Because like I told you, ecstatic joy is our natural state. When you start uncovering up all that fear and anxiety and worry, oh my gosh, underneath that is who we are, which is our ecstatic joy. And here's the thing, you, everybody on here, is we're all connected. The entire 7.7 .7 billion of us are connected. And so right now we've, we've kind of had a jolt to our system and everybody's kind of got knocked off their rocker there. You know, oh, you know, vibrating is very low vibration as a collective. But what we're doing tonight and what you can do because you're important and you can affect the whole planet. When you start vibrating at a higher level, we bring the whole planet up. We shift the vibration of the planet. Last night I was laying in my bed and I could not sleep. I feel so much joy. I'm just like, oh, like, and there was a thunderstorm going on and poof, thunder and lightning. And just, just to let you know, I have a lot of things happening, very supernatural in my life. And one of them is uh, I get transmissions and I get visitations from beings. I actually got a, a I got a visitation from the, the Norse god Thor, which is the god of thunder and lightning. And he was, visited me in my meditation a couple weeks ago, well, a week ago. And he was just telling me, I want you to keep being strong, be courageous. And he was thanking me for being here. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So when that lightning hit, and it's that, uh, that thunder and lightning, I was like, thank you, Lord. And I just, just feel so much joy. This is our biggest opportunity. I've been waiting for this moment. And you're like, what are you talking about, Denise? talking about a major shift on this planet. This is the marks, uh, the crowning. Corona means crown. This is the crowning, like you're birthing a baby, of a new day. And everything's gonna be different from here on out. And it's a big awakening. So we get to choose. We get to create what that looks like. So if we're creating it from this place of fear and scarcity, it's not gonna be very fun. It's gonna suck. I don't recommend that. Let's start opening up to our joy. And let's start creating and raising the vibration of the planet. Because it's a whole lot more fun. It's a whole lot more fun than what we're doing when we're all depressed and, and sad and feeling lonely and isolated. Just start raising your vibration. So I want to do um, a quick little breathing and exercise to help us to do that right now. So what we're gonna do is we've been talking a lot about fun things and funny things. And so I want you to imagine yourself like this ball of yellow joy. You're just this ball, yellow ball of joy. And just vibrate, feel your joy. Can you feel it? Can you feel your joy? Smile, smile. Shh, you're this yellow ball of joy. And breathe into it. Feel yourself vibrating joy. Now, I want you to expand yourself to fill up your house. The whole house is, is you, this yellow ball of joy. The big old, big old yellow ball of joy. You feel it? You feel all tingly? Just excited? Shh, yes. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna expand out to our whole city. And we're going to hold hands with everybody in our city, vibrating this joy, this yellow ball of joy. And then we're going to vibrate out to the entire world. 
and hold hands with 7.7 .7 billion people in the entire earth. We're all connected, vibrating <sighs> this space of joy. We are completely raising the vibration of the planet. Yes, yes, yes. How does that feel? That's something that you can do. You can do that throughout the day. And watch and see if you don't feel better. You know when you smile, you feel better. When we smile and we laugh, we actually release um, endorphins. And so, in fact, the work that we're doing here is healing all of these low vibrational energies. That's why we are creating them. We as a collective created this situation so that we could heal ourselves and come into this new way of being. So the way we heal ourselves is not by pushing it all away and trying to run away and trying to fight our fears and figure it out. Don't worry about figuring it out. You already have it figured out. Your divine limitless nature has it figured out. It's just a matter of you getting out of that low vibration, getting out of that human, limited human way of being and moving into your divine limitless nature and accessing your joy. So you can do this anytime and you can, you can actually raise the vibration of the planet through your experience. And also, by the way, your joy, it comes from your power center, which is your solar plexus here, and it's also your, your, where your will is. So you may say, I don't feel like smiling. Guess what? You can choose. The same with forgiveness. You can choose. Once you choose to forgive, once you choose to be joyful, that the feelings follow. So it's very important that you keep being persistent about staying in this high vibration. And it's a whole lot more fun. So what I do as a practice is whenever fear, sadness, disappointment, jealousy, anger, scarcity, all of that unworthiness shows up for me, I just love on that part of myself and I invite them into joy. I say, come over here. I, I picture them like little sad girls over there in the dark and I'm like, come over here. There's more fun in the light. There's more fun in joy. You know it's not fun back there. Come over here. And they're like, yes, 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 and yes. And they come in and poof, they morph back into joy, into love, into peace. <sighs> It's been amazing. It's been an hour, and I can let you go. If you missed the first part of it, watch the replay, because I told a bunch of funny stories. I love you so much. Is there anybody want to say anything before we go? <sighs> okay. I will let you go. Enjoy the rest of your evening and enjoy. Oh, I feel like I'm getting kisses. I enjoy the rest of your evening and enjoy your weekend. Remember, this is our greatest opportunity to awaken and to love ourselves and to create a new earth. I love you so much.